Good morning, everyone, and welcome. The officiant this morning is our pastor, Father Jerry. We now begin the liturgy for the 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand, join in the opening hymn, number 431, I Sing the Mighty Power of God.
Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to everybody in church, especially our guests and those watching on the internet. Glad you can join us this way. For those coming in, we still got uh, room up front. You can upgrade, no extra charge. Let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May God's grace, peace, and love be with you all. And as we gather this day, we always remind ourselves of God's incredible mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our rock and redeemer. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the hope of your people. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are our refuge in the storm. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let's praise God with the Gloria. Let us pray. O Lord, grant that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives, reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. And let's hear God's word. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped when we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me, like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, 
You who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. A letter from a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin death, and thus death came to all men inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin. After the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression, for if by the transgression of the one the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many. The word of the Lord. Oh. 
with you. Yes, reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledged me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. The readings talk about fear. What are you afraid of? In the, I'll give you some examples of how people have dealt with fear in light of the gospel. A man by the name of Jim Moore recalls when he was five being at his grandmother's house and a great storm of rain and lightning and thunder came up. The wind was blowing and it was going to be for a long time and even though they only lived a couple blocks apart, his father had to come walking over to the grandma's house to get the son Jim. And what the dad did is he had a big blue raincoat and he said, Jim, come over here. He opened his coat, put Jim inside, closed it, and out the door they went back to their home. Jim recalls he could feel the rain pelting on his dad's coat. He could feel the wind. He could hear the thunder. But he was not afraid because he was safe within his father's arms. And what happened is they got home, one inside, opened the coat, and Jim was safe. In what acts have we truly trusted the Father in heaven alone, just like Jim did? Jesus says, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both body and soul in hell or Gehenna. Be not afraid of what happens. God protects. Dr. Sheila Cassidy went to Chile to work with the poorest of the poor. One day she treated an opposition leader. The secret police learned about it, arrested her, tortured her. She writes in her book, Audacity to Believe. After four days of physical pain, I was left completely alone in a small room. Incredibly, I was filled with joy, for I knew that God was with me and, <clears throat> and that nothing they could do to me could change that. She understood the words of Jesus. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Sometimes we have to do the right thing no matter what people think. That's another point that Jesus made. Tom Brown was a very popular boy who attended a boarding school in England. He lived with a, about another dozen boys in a dormitory. And he was kind of considered a leader. And what happened is, is that one day they had a new boy that came to school and was put into 
their dormitory. And when it came time for bed that night, the new boy got down on his knees beside his bed and said his prayers. And many of the other boys snickered at him and made some snide comments. One even threw a shoe at him. What happened is when Tom went to bed that night, he didn't go to sleep for a while. He remembered growing up and his mother teaching him to say <clears throat> his own prayers on his knees before he went to bed. He had not done that since he went off to boarding school. Well, the next day came, and night was to come, and the boys were getting ready for bed. And Tom was aware that some of the other boys were planning some more harassment of this new boy as he prayed. Well, what happened is, is that as the new boy got down on his knees to say his prayers, Tom also got down on his knees to pray. And with that gesture, nobody, nobody in that dormitory did anything to harass the new kid, let alone Tom. In the gospel today, it says, everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly father. You know, one of the most profound things we can do as Catholics is if you go to a restaurant, you're getting your meal, just sit there for a moment and make the sign of the cross and say a prayer and then begin your meal. You will speak volumes to that restaurant. So there are trials we go through in life. That is part of life. Where do you go with the storms in your life? Sheryl Sandberg was the chief operation officer of Facebook, now called Meta. Very successful businesswoman. She and her husband took a vacation trip to Mexico. And on that trip, her husband died suddenly. <laughs> on the way back on the plane, she was preparing herself how to tell her seven-year-old daughter and 10-year-old son that dad had died. Later on, she wrote a book with a psychologist called Option B, Facing Adversity, Building Resilience and Finding Joy. For her, it was three things, three points that she had. Mattering, family, and memory. One, start by showing that children matter. Sociologists define mattering as the belief that other people notice you, care about you, and rely upon you. Youth often ask, do I make a difference to others? Step two, said, she said, was making sure she and her kids understood that they would still be a family without dad and that what they would be for one another, be there for one another no matter what. They got family rules. One of them was, it's okay to cry. It's okay to be happy and to laugh. It's okay to be jealous when they're with cousins and friends that have a dad and they don't. And lastly, number three, memory. Making sure the dad's memory was kept alive. A lot of times she would uh, say to one of her children, you know, you are just like daddy with what you just said. Or when a daughter stands up for a classmate, she says, you are just like your dad. The last point was counting the hairs on your head. God does that. For some of us, that ain't too much of a job. <laughs> but in just a few weeks after her surgery, the chemotherapy treatments had begun. Every morning she would wake up, comb, comb her hair, Every morning, she would pull out another clump of her beautiful hair. This uh, side effect was hitting harder and harder. Then one morning, she woke up, felt the top of her head, and for the first time, she could literally count the remaining hairs on her head. And what happened is, is that in some ways, she said, I felt 
very comforted. She says, I felt comfort knowing that God knew how many strands were in my brush, on my pillow, in my hat, and in my hand. God had counted them all. With or without my hair, God knew me and what my future held. I was still afraid of cancer, of the chemo, the upcoming brain scan, and its result. But, but, I knew that God would be with me through it all. She got it right. She got it right. Jesus says this, and that does not mean that we will never be subject to any harm or abuse. Rather, there are truths or places in our heart that can only be touched by pain. Not that God wills it, but that's the way it is. See, redemption is when we can see good come out of a very painful, difficult situation. And I pray, folks, as we heard the words of the gospel today, that we find that peace through what we know about the Lord, that the Lord is always with us. Amen. Well, we have told us to us team, well, three of the four are here. One is doing a, finishing up a wedding, but she'll be here this afternoon. Why don't you come up here? And they're going to be at St. Joe's all week, but they got some good news for everybody here this morning. Welcome. Well, good morning. Uh, thank you, Father, for having us. Um, my name is Alex Starsky, and these are my teammates, Ellie and Michael. And uh, as Father said, we'll be joined by Jada, who is currently at a wedding. She'll be joining us this, this afternoon. Um, but we are the totus, one of the three Totus Tuus teams for the Diocese of Superior this summer. Um, and Totus Tuus was the papal model of Pope St. John Paul II, and it means totally yours, Jesus, through the hands of Mary. The purpose of Totus Tuus is to bring youth to a deeper relationship with Christ through catechesis, prayer, sacraments, and of course, fun. The day program is for students going into first grade through sixth grade, and it starts at nine in the morning and goes until 2.30 in the afternoon on Monday through Friday. Um, the, these kids that will be coming to the day program, if they could just bring a bag lunch and themselves, that's pretty much all they need. Um, we will be ending the week with a water fight on Friday afternoon, as well as a human Sunday. Um, and the night program, which will start tonight and go until Thursday, uh, is for students going into 7th grade through 12th grade. And it starts at 7.30 p.m. and goes until 9.30. And that, again, is from tonight through Thursday night. And all of this will be held at St. Joseph's um, in Amory. Um, as well, uh, there will also be a parish dinner that's held on Wednesday night at 5.30 p.m., um, and that will also be at St. Joe's. Um, and we'll be hosting a short presentation just explaining the program um, in a little more depth and our lives as missionaries this summer. Um, we would love to see you all there, even if you don't have children or grandchildren. It's just great to see you and be able to build those connections. And um, my team and I will be in the back of the church after Mass if you have any questions or would like to just talk to us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. A little love for him. If you have young people uh, or grandchildren that have not signed up, it's not too late. So just talk to them afterwards, and you're encouraged to attend. It's free, and uh, it's just an incredible experience. So we're just really honored for them to be here. So let's rise now for our profession of faith on page nine of the hymnal. Again, this is uh, stuff that gives us strength and keeps us uh, grounded when we go through difficult times. Together we pray, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, in one God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, with the Father. Through him all things were made. 
for us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose from again from the dead day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let's now turn to the Lord for the needs that we have this day. And at the end of those, we're going to be praying the vocation prayer that the bishop has asked us to pray at every Mass. That's in a little uh, bookmark, hopefully in the hymnal. And then, obviously, we'll include totus to us as part of their mission. Okay? That Christians throughout the world may be united in speaking prophetically in hope and in charity. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the easing of tensions with China, Russia, Ukraine, and the many other troubled countries of the world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of law enforcement personnel and first responders, and an end to violence in our streets, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That our national leaders find a pathway through working together for the common good of all the people within our country, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For more rain and good weather for crops and gardens, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That there may be an increase in our respect for human life and the dignity of all people. May God help us see the presence of Christ in all those we meet. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Herb and Dixie Guard, remembered at this Mass, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayer requests rented, written in the bulletin and those held in our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our totus to us week, and together we pray the vocation prayer. O oh God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons, and lay ministers who will love you with their whole mind and heart, gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known in love. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious, and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's be seated as our tithes are gathered and the bread and wine prepared at the altar. While our gifts are being prepared, please join in number 469, The Lord is My Hope.
Pray that our gifts of bread and wine or tithes and offerings be acceptable to God. May the Lord accept. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty, salvation, always everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. And by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like dewfall, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we hear this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Until Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, and all baptized believers. Remember also our brothers, sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her holy spouse, Saint Joseph, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you through the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. rise to join our voices to pray for the kingdom our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we wait the great hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who we'll live and reign forever and ever Amen. the peace of the lord be with you always and with your spirit. greet those about you with some sign of christ's peace Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world and gives his peace. Happy those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn 
is number 332, Gift of Finest Wheat. And our announcements for today, we do have fellowship in the back, and everybody's welcome to be uh, going back for that. We've been doing teaching mass every week. This week was the Gloria, where we give glory to God. If you take time to look at that prayer, it's everything that God has done for us. 
Um, I know this is a big deal for many of you. Our Lady of the Lakes garage sale is next weekend, so. <laughs> but you can help today, right after Mass and after you're done with coffee, if you could set up the tables and the move the chairs in preparations for the uh, garage sale later on this week in the social hall, that would be awesome. Also, 8, eight o'clock tomorrow morning, if you want to come and volunteer to move all the stuff that's in the classrooms, they'll have it spread out on the tables and whatever else needs to be done. Sound good? Is that right, Meg? Is that good? Where are you? There she is. Is that okay? Okay, good. See that lady back there, she'll tell you. Um, um, and also, it was pointed out to me, what happened 20 years ago this week? The church was dedicated. So that's pretty cool. Three churches, if you don't know the history, three churches came together to form this church. So that's pretty something. 20 years and it's paid for. So God bless all you people. And also a special welcome to our guests. If you're looking for a church home, please consider Lady of the Lakes. And we include those online, uh, even if you can't join us. Please consider us as a, as a member. Last thing is that our new hymnals, we've, or replacing in the first Sunday of Advent, have arrived. But if you'd like to donate one in honor or memory of somebody, there are sheets in the back on a podium. You can still do that. So do have a blessed week. Talk about not fearing. Yes, I have fears. I'm real concerned about Russia, China, in those situations, and our own country. But I know I have to trust God, and God's going to get us through no matter what's going to happen. So have a blessed week. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go in peace to do God's work. Thanks be to God. The Sending Forth Hymn is number 381, Sent Forth by God's Blessing. Mm -hmm. 